JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFT's daily market review for May the 3rd. I am Harla Mospissuros, Head of Research here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against uh, the other major currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday, gain versus CHF, GBP and the Euro in that order, while it underperformed against AUD, NZD, JPY and CAD. Now the strengthening of the risk linked and commodity linked uh, Aussie and QE combined with the weakening of the Swiss franc uh, suggests that markets may have traded in a risk on fashion. However, the fact that the yen managed to even gain somewhat makes us skeptical on that front. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we see that major European indices, uh, the major European indices under our radar that we are open yesterday fell by more than 1% each, uh, but this may have been the result of a brief crash, uh, excuse me, a brief uh, crash in uh, Nordic markets caused by a single sell order uh, uh, trade uh, by, sitting group, by sitting group. During the US session, appetite improved with Nasdaq gaining the most. Uh, as you can see on the graph here, it gained 1.63%. Now today in Asia, Japan sneaky 2 to 5 and China Shanghai Composite stayed closed due to holidays while Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI stayed near their opening levels. Now despite the recovery in US indices and especially in Nasdaq, we are reluctant to change our view, especially with the US Fed decision looming tomorrow. As we noted yesterday, the comedy is widely expected to hike rates uh, by 50 basis points and thus, if indeed this is the case, all the attention is likely to fall to hints and clues with regards to the comedy's future course of action. Anything confirming the aggressive expectations over multiple uh, sizable, multiple more sizable uh, rate increments in the months to come uh, could, f could refuel the, the US dollar uptrend and perhaps bring equities under selling interest. We repeat for the upteenth time that higher interest rates mean higher borrowing costs uh, for companies as well as lower present values, especially for high growth firms, which are valued based on discounted expected cash flows for the months and years ahead. The opposite could be true in case the committee fails uh, to satisfy uh, current expectations. Now today during the Asian morning we already had a major central bank deciding on interest rates and this was the RBA. The bank decided to hike by 25 basis points to 0.35% from 0.10%, surprising the financial community which was expecting a 15 basis points increase and sending the Aussie higher against every other uh, of its uh, major peers. The bank committed to doing what is necessary to ensure that inflation returns to target over time and explicitly said that this will require a further lift in interest rates over the period ahead. Now this added some credence to the overly hawkish market expectations around this bank's uh, future course of action, but officials have yet to confirm uh, how fast they are willing to proceed. In any case, the Aussie may continue to benefit against currencies, the central banks of which are staying ultra, ultra, excuse me, ultra dovish, like the Bank of Japan, and perhaps even against, against central banks which are planning to normalize at a slower pace, like the ECB. 
In other words, we do see the case for Ozzie to drift uh, further north and for uh, Euro Aussie to extend its uh, overnight slide and perhaps uh, break below the upside support line drawn from the low of April 5th. Having said all that, though, we don't see the case for a trend reversal in Aussie dollar. Yes, a lot will depend on tomorrow's FOMC outcome, but from what we know at the moment, the Fed is ready to proceed with uh, double and triple hikes in the months to come. Much more aggressive, uh, a much more aggressive um, plan than the RBA's quarter point hike. Thus, we stick to our guns that, barring any major surprises tomorrow, the path of least resistance for Aussie dollar is still to uh, is and will still be to the downside. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, the only data releases worth mentioning for the rest of Tuesday are the German unemployment rate for April, the UK's final, manu uh, UK's final manufacturing uh, PMI for the same month, and the US uh, jolts uh, job openings uh, for March. Now, tonight, during the Asian session, we do have uh, New Zealand's employment report for the first quarter. The employment rate is expected to have stayed unchanged at 3.2% and the net change in employment to show that the economy has continued to add jobs at the same slow pace as in the fourth quarter of last year. The labor cost index, uh, though, is expected to have risen further to 3.1% year over year from 2.8% which could add to speculation of further acceleration in New Zealand's inflation and thereby revive some speculation over, over more rate hikes by the RBNZ. Remember that at its latest gathering, the RBNZ lifted rates by 50 basis points, <coughs> excuse me, but hinted that it hiked more now so it can slow down uh, later. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.